<laughs> hey there, my friends, and how's it going? Welcome to 15 Minute Free Thinking, the podcast that's also a video, which is brought to you by my patrons on Patreon, as well as the random people who leave random comments for oh so long. Oh so long. From the time I started this channel, I didn't even have a beard. Okay, I had a beard. I didn't have a white beard, though. And uh, although I'm using monochrome here, uh, you can definitely tell I've got a couple racing stripes going on here. And uh, times change. We get older. We go through a lot of shit in our life. And during this time, with all the videos I've shared, a lot of the things I've shared have been very mundane. Things like speakers, talking about stereos, other times deep philosophical thoughts. But very rarely do I actually attack or degrade any particular belief system or person or group of people. Now, anyone who comes across my channel when I make a political video or talk bad about something that I think is a travesty, uh, they may have a different view of that. Something actually that reminds me of that I encountered earlier when I was talking with somebody and I, they mentioned something and I said I don't like that particular thing and they were like, oh, haters will hate. <laughs> and it was kind of a half joke, but I thought about this. I thought, you know, anytime you don't like something that someone else likes, you're a hater. And uh, this is pretty universal with music, with religion, with politics. It's amazing how pervasive this is through all different cultures. But that's not what I'm really talking about in this particular case. But rather saying that no matter what I say here, somebody's going to think I'm a hater, or somebody's going to hate on me because of what I'm saying. Even though it's a pretty very basic and simplified version of what I think is important. Now, I want to talk about a few things here while I'm on this page things that are spiritual in nature, and I'm trying to kind of give you an idea of what I'm going to talk about. A little bit of antinatalism, a little bit of spirituality, and these fake-ass gurus. And I guess why I mentioned that I talk bad about certain groups and people is especially one of the things that frustrates me more than anything are fake-ass gurus. And if I even mention any of these gurus by name, I'll get a flood of hatred. And my videos, generally, I don't put any keywords in there. So I won't put in things like Deepak Chopra or Sadhguru or any of the various people who claim to be channeling alien entities or higher beings. Because in my experiences, in my journeys in life, I've found that people have some amazing connections to the ether, to something that's unknown, that I'm completely open to. But my own experiences have led me to believe that the human conduit is a weak translation of anything spiritual to the masses. And I'll get at where I'm going there from, you know, in a moment here. You may have heard of cymatics, things like solfagio or binaural beats, uh, frequency-based, you know, spiritual practices or experiments. Min matter responds to frequency, to sound. Now, these are things that have been shown. I've experiment experimented with cymatics in the past and shown the different patterns. If Anybody who's looked into this, it's pretty damn amazing. But it's easy to take that discovery and lead one to the conclusion that, well, it must be this or it must be that, that it must be the word of God or that matter responds. Therefore, I'm going to create this whole belief system around this or I'm going to tell you that I can sell you these tones that are healing frequencies, that I can put up YouTube videos and get ad revenue from these healing sounds that people are desperate to hear that are really just tones. And believe me, I've experimented with all these different spiritual practices, binaural beats, and the things that I do talk shit about, I have a history with experimenting with. Now, Binaural beats, by the way, are when you're putting one frequency that's a few hertz lower than the one in the other ear. This can vary by what you're trying to achieve. I'm not dismissing them. They actually, they're not something I'm including in the list of garbage. Um, nor healing tones, because there's so much placebo involved. Um, and cymatics has some basis in reality, too. 
because of the way that it organizes matter. Um, and I bring these up in the beginning to give you an idea of some of the things that I've really been fascinated with in the past. And then I see a video where somebody claims that it's this, or it's that, or it's this, or it's that. Now you can buy a course for $399 and a special little wand with a crystal on the end that's going to put you closer to your spiritual truth, put you into your five-dimensional reality. And it's all bullshit. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, how do you know? You know, how does this guy on the internet know? What a carpo, what does he know about anything? Well, I have this m little shot glass here full of uh, honey. It's actually mushroom honey. Mmm, it's delicious. Okay, it's a little funky. Mmm. But let me just tell you, that mushroom honey gave me the insight to tell you the truth. <laughs> now, this is a joke, obviously. Not a joke that I've been eating the honey all day. But um, then again, I have a variety of substances. That's just how life is sometimes. But you should probably expect me to get to the point here. It always takes me a moment. The spiritual world, the religious world, is full of kooks and loonies and crazies who don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And I believe that, let me just say, for like psychics, let's say things like Ouija boards or spiritual seances or people doing any kind of what they would call light work, there might be perhaps some sort of a message that a person receives. And believe me, eating mushrooms, I've had some amazing experiences. Or even sober, just on an amazing mountain, looking over the forest, or walking through the forest. Just because I get a message that nature is something amazing doesn't mean that I, as a human, think I can interpret that for others and charge them to hear that. Now, psychics, prophets, or people who claim to be prophets, and these fake-ass gurus online like nothing more than you for you to believe that what they're talking about is true. And when, <laughs> when a person questions them with a really legitimate question, they will often laugh. And this is especially common in Hinduism and Buddhism, where a guru is sitting there cross-legged, someone asks them a serious question that requires a serious answer. And they go, oh, you'll understand one day. Like, don't patronize me, douchebag. Putting on that robe doesn't make you any more enlightened. How is your family life? How are your relationships? You know, it's not about the money. But I think the point I wanted to make here is that life is vague. Vague. Very, very vague. Your life is vague. Your future is vague. And even your past is obscured and pretty vague. Our memories are not as good as we'd like them to be. And because of this fact, when we hear other people who are making big, bold claims that they know what's true, when you can see they don't have it their own life even together in the way that you would live, let's say, how do you know that what they've found in their truth and enlightenment is going to assist you? In fact, anyone who's claimed to find enlightenment is pretty much full of shit. Um, not pretty much, but completely. If anyone ever tells you that they got enlightened somewhere or became enlightened, you can pretty much guarantee that they're completely full of shit. So, yeah, that's a pretty stubborn and bold comment for me to make, but that's how I feel. It's not that I don't believe enlightenment exists, it's that I believe in a different, different definition, that it's a process that unfolds. And when you receive even the most basic lessons of enlightenment, you realize that profiteering or lying or making up stories is like the farthest from that truth you could ever come. And when people find out they can't profit on this truth, it bothers people. They really want to think that the work they've done to better themselves can be sold to others and packaged up. Now, I'm not saying that a, you can't write a book that can assist people or give them your opinions, your viewpoints on life, the things that you found useful. But to pretend like it's the truth or the one truth, 
we're getting way off track. If you just be yourself, and this is my opinion on it, the rest will follow. You just have to be an authentic person. And I think that a lot of people are not being authentic. And <laughs> it's not that I think that, it's that I know that. We all put on a little bit of a mask. We all put on a little bit of a face. There are some people who try to be so authentic that they become completely fraudulent in the very nature of their attempt to be themselves. Because there's a certain amount of groupthink that occurs as a human. Things that we take for granted, such as being able to rely on others or ask others for advice, you know, or look to our parents, to our friends, to our children, whoever it might be, to say, hey, what is the right path to take here? And have others guide us because we generally don't know shit by ourselves. And we really like to think that everyone else is the sheeple and that we know what we're talking about. Or at least a lot of people do. And you find out once you're over that Dunning-Kruger curve that you really didn't know shit to begin with. Which leads us back to prophecies, evangelists, screaming on the internet or on TV, the Jim and Tammy Faye Bakers of, you know, the modern day. <clears throat> you just fill up that collection plate, you know. Uh, in modern spirituality, if you want to call it that, they just put it under a different guise. It's just disguised under a different thing, like a donation to this course. Or you can get free access, but if you want full access to our spiritual chakra, five-dimensional libraries that'll show you your true self and be who you want to be, it's only like $400, sorry, $399. I mean, these people don't even fucking round it up to just be honest. They just straight up use the 99s just like any other marketing scheme. There's one guy named David Sereda who sells these wands for like five or $6,000 on his website. It's basically a flashlight, a mag light, that's been painted and converted. They put a ruby in it and claim it has all these healing properties and powers. The things sell, obviously. He's making them. And I think of how many people are so desperate out there. People like this take advantage. These are the kind of people who are the snake oil salesmen of our time. But they're not just spiritual, spiritual uh, folks selling you junk like that. They are the preachers, the priests, the pastors. Even if they believe what they're saying, quite often they're selling you hope in a format that requires you put on the collection plate. It's important to realize that spirituality and belief in a higher power costs no money. It should never, ever, ever cost you a dime. You should never have to give money to a church. Unless it's a group thing where you're paying into the community. You know, if your church is just a big, huge, fancy church, I mean, you don't need all that shit. It's, it's very opinion, you know, this is my opinion, of course, but... So, as I was saying earlier, we're all sheep. In reality, we should all be shepherds, right? Shepherds, not wolves, you know. It's very important to take care of one another which means we want, by nature, and I believe in our human, our human nature is to want to care for others and help them. And this is why so many people are out there claiming that they're helping others, but really many are using that as a guise to prey upon other people. And um, I find it disgusting. The evangelists, the televangelists, see this right here? Got this in the mail the other day. This says, Prophecy Unsealed in a World of Confusion. It's got a picture of a lion with wings, a dinosaur, a cheetah with wings, a grizzly bear, a crowd full of protesters with masks, and a lady with a, her hand on her head going, oh God, with a mask on. Coming to Vancouver. This was from a couple months ago. And it's got all the hellfire shit inside. I just wanted to read part. Um, part one is unlocking Revelation's mysteries. Of course. Why not tell people what Revelation means? I read it when I was 16. I have my own opinion on it. I'm not going to go into that. Number two is A Thief in the Night, which talks about the rapture. And part three is Spiritualism Exposed. Death's Mystery Solved. Oh, then there's another one that's Revelations 1,000 Years. And then it says more topics to include. It shows a fire burning, and it says, 
What is hellfire really all about? The next one says, the issue that divides the world, and the final one, God's test of loyalty. And it goes on to mention the mark of the beast, USA and Bible prophecy. Heaven, is it for real? Unmasking the Antichrist, the last night on earth, and how to overcome bad habits and others. <laughs> now, this kind of shit is put in people's mailboxes consistently. And, you know, it's just something we deal with. Just like people knocking on your door. Missionaries, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons. I'm not anti-religion. It's something I want to make clear. I believe that religion brings people hope. But I also believe that it brings people confusion when you're pushing it on others and they have their own viewpoints. And the reason I have nothing against religion itself is people like that that made that flyer who absolutely have no real interest in religion itself. It's a marketing ploy, just like much of the spirituality. I'm subscribed to this Transformation into the New Paradigm website that sends me emails all the time. And they talk about finding your quantum five-dimensional self and your purpose in life. And they're constantly sending out courses from all these just horrible, horrible wannabe spiritual gurus. And so, you know, I guess that's all I really have to say about that. I'm just kind of calling out bullshit where I see it. And I think a lot of this is pretentious nonsense. Just like a lot of philosophies out there are pretentious nonsense. Like a person may say about nihilism, which is a lot of folks misinterpret it to believe that nihilism means nothing matters. And I wanted to talk about this for a minute because of a different term, which is derived from this. Because nihilism in itself is breaking down all the walls of what you think is real and what matters, and then building your own reality. I think people give up at the point of nihilism where they say nothing matters, and they just leave it at that. Instead of saying, what do I want to make matter? It's about taking your fucking life into your own hands. It's such a simple concept. It doesn't mean that you're always going to be successful or rich or have a great business or everything is going to work out. It means that it's in here as to what you think is important and what you make work for yourself. So I come across a term a few years back, antinatalism. And I mentioned this because I posted a, a comment the other day. I watched a video, a couple videos about antinatalism recently that came up randomly, and I was aware of the concept, but I couldn't believe that the thumbs down were like in the thousands. They were like 5,000 thumbs down to like 2,000 thumbs up. And I thought about this for a minute. Who is seeking out videos per defending life and thumbing them down on purpose. It's a fascinating concept. So I'd like to talk about this for a minute. I think it's very important. It's my belief that antinatalism, I should define it first, antinatalism is the belief that life is not worth living and therefore life should not exist at all. And some antinatalists would argue, well, it's more complicated, complex than that, but it's not at all. It's very simple. They said that nobody should basically be born because life is suffering. It's basically taking Buddhism and extreme Christianity to the farthest and worst stretches without accepting the other side of it. It's like tipping the scales on one side of Buddha, Buddhism without acknowledging that only the only way we can feel happiness and see good is through experiencing adversity. And it's such a simple concept that once you realize it, you don't know how you could ever see it any differently. But a lot of people have not figured this out yet. A lot of people really believe that life should always be happy. And what happens is, that falls through, and they realize that they're going to be fucked for a while, and then they become antinatalists, which is the position that children didn't ask to be born, therefore it is unjust and it is immoral to bring children into this world. Now, anyone who's never heard this before would think instantly, well, maybe that's true, uh, maybe we shouldn't, and other people would think, well, that's ridiculous, the human race would cease to exist. What amazes me about most of these antinatalists is that they're so outspoken. They have so much energy and gusto to go talk about it. And I think, why haven't they just you know, done themselves in. Why do they have this energy, you know? Why can't they say, you know, with that type of mentality, 
and this and you can try to refute this, but I've, I've heard this argument before. If you believe life has no value, you should believe in basically infant, in, infant, what is it? Infant, infanticide, infanticide? <laughs> killing of babies, because, right? Why put them through any suffering? You know, they were just born. Let's not put them through any more of this bullshit and just end it. Nobody would tell you that they agree with killing people. There's this idea that once you're born, oh well, too late now, you're fucked, you're suffering. And I just want to say first, I respect and understand the opinion of nihilism to the point where a person's had a very difficult life, a bad upbringing, and they want to blame their parents for anything that's gone wrong in their lives. And I understand that a lot of the times, a kid's life is affected by his environment and his parents to such a degree that he cannot even function in this world. I do realize that some people cannot handle this planet. But at the same time, to assume that everyone should follow your beliefs that humans in general should not reproduce, it means that you've created a religion out of something. Antinatalism becomes a religion. Because a religion is a set of beliefs that are based on an idea. And there's absolutely no reason that you couldn't consider that the same thing. But antinatalism is basically the belief in non-existence as the primary mover. In other words, that the universe shouldn't have any life in it whatsoever. I mean, if human life doesn't matter, then no life should matter, which means that there's no observer, which means there's no existence, right? It is the most confusing, blame game type, poor me attitude. And I know that that'll upset some people. But sometimes you have to be kicked in the ass a little bit. Pull yourself up. You know, realize that life is hard. Life is complicated. But to give up on it completely and assume you should never have been born is a fucking pity party. It's tough love, and I really believe in tough love in some of these things. Now, some people have serious mental issues, and I don't want to offend anyone who really has severe depression and anxiety. But I also realize that so many people ride on the coattails of those who are suffering and saying, oh, I have it so bad, not realizing we're all fucked up. I got fucked up teeth, I got health problems, you know, I've, I, I, I'm broke, I have all kinds of problems, just like the rest of you. Everyone does, but not everyone complains about it. So it doesn't seem fair to the people who really suffer when you have these people. It's kind of like people in really poor countries who keep a smile on their face. They have to walk and get their water every day, go hunt their food, and they come back to their village smiling. And then they see this American who's crying because they didn't get the right color car for their birthday. Not even did not get a car, but the right color Mustang. The type of reality TV bullshit that we live in. Where we can't keep up with the Joneses and poor me because I don't have enough. Look, if you have a fucking computer to comment and a cell phone to communicate, you're not doing that bad. I mean, I know that sounds pretty shallow, but it's not. It's well thought out. We all have to be strong for each other and ourselves. So, strength really does matter. It really does. And looking at past philosophies can give us a really good idea of what works and what doesn't. Which is why when I heard about nihilism in the past, I studied Nietzsche. Because I wanted to understand what was his real viewpoint on this, you know? What does he mean that nothing matters? And then I heard the actual studies, not what people were telling me about it. But, uh, you know, the one thing I've learned, this is a crucial aspect here, important point, people do not like being told they're wrong, or that their ideas are wrong. I don't, but that's why I don't have a lot of really strong ideas. I kind of go with the flow, unless I know something for sure. And one of the things I do know for sure is that we can't we're going to be wrong a lot. We can't always be right. But it's not that people don't want to be wrong. It's that they want their life to be as good as possible. And it's my belief that by having a positive outlook, our lives can be better than they are with a nihilistic or anti-natalist attitude even, which is the extreme of it. It's kind of the man up in, you know, in quotations. People hate hearing that. It's become so cliche in the year 2020. But it's true. Not just man, mankind, you know, to man up. Buck up, realize that life is fucking hard. Because here's what I've found. I find myself in depressive ruts. 
I find myself sad. I wake up. I worry about life. I worry about problems. I think, what's the point of any of this? It's all bullshit. But you know what I do? I force myself to get through it and move on with my day. And generally, I'm a pretty happy person. I'm, I, you know, it's a practice. If you don't practice positivity, you're going to fall into a negative bullshit trap. And I'll tell you, that is what hell is. Hell is not a place. Religion's idea of hell is so completely off base, they've missed the whole point. Hell is what you create here on earth by living a miserable life with a bad attitude. And I guarantee you, nobody else is going to change it except you. And if that sounds harsh, it's true. It's because it's true. Nobody likes hearing the truth. I found that out myself too. I have nobody to blame my problems for except for myself. Where I'm not at in life, the things I haven't done, is often our own choice. And so I feel strongly about that. Which is why I brought up antinatalism. The idea that an adult with an education can sit there and say that life has no meaning. It's pathetic. But on the other hand, there's always going to be somebody to tell you they know what the meaning of life is. And they will sell you that course for $1,000. My bad. $999.99. So thanks for listening. Thanks to my peeps. Thanks to my patrons. Thanks to anybody who has something to say. And uh, remember, this wasn't an attack on anything in particular. Except for the idea that life has no meaning. Because I will attack that all day long. It's preposterous and ridiculous. I'm out. Peace and love.